Now let's take what we know about projectile motion and solve some example problems. And we'll start off with this one, Speedy driving off the edge of a cliff. And in this case, he leaves with an initial velocity, V0, is equal to 25 meters per second. And we're also told that the cliff is 80 meters high. And just for fun, let's put some jagged rocks here. And these jagged rocks extend out 100 meters from the edge of the cliff. So he comes down, and we'll figure out if he clears the jagged rocks or not. Okay, 25 meters per second. He's going horizontally at 25 meters per second off of an 80 meter cliff. And we want to know how long it takes him to fall and how far away from the base of the cliff he lands. So here's what we'll do. We'll assume that t equals zero is the moment that he leaves the cliff right there. His, his position right there at time zero is the moment he leaves the cliff. So that's the beginning of the pro projectile motion. Now the key to solving this is to consider the horizontal and the vertical motion independently of each other. So we'll do that. I'll start off with the vertical motion. And I'll write vertical here to indicate that I'm thinking about the vertical motion only. And I'll write down my given information. Initially, the initial velocity, I'm going to say, is zero. And that's key to understand that. The initial velocity is 25 meters per second. But that initial velocity is entirely horizontal. When he leaves the cliff, he's moving to the right. He's not moving up or down at all. So if we're considering only the vertical motion, the initial velocity vertically is zero. The acceleration will be 9.8 meters per second squared. That's true if I consider down to be the positive direction. And in this case, I'll think of down as positive because he starts up here and he's moving down. So it makes sense for down to be positive. You could solve this problem with up positive. It would work fine that way as well. The initial position is zero, and the final position is 80 meters. And set up that way with zero here and 80 meters down here, you should see that that is consistent with down being positive. So that's my given information for the vertical motion. Now I can use this equation, y equals y0 plus v0t plus one-half at squared. And in this case, the initial velocity, remember, was zero. And the initial position is zero. So the equation simpl simplifies to y equals one-half at squared. And I can solve this for t, or for t squared. t squared is two times y over a. And I can put in some, some numbers here, two times 80 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And my meters will cancel. I'll have units of seconds squared, which makes sense for t squared. And when I do the math, t squared comes out to 16.3 seconds squared. And I take the square root of that to find t, and t comes out to be 4.04 seconds. So that's how long it takes him to fall, and that's one of the things that I was trying to find. And I find the time that it takes him to fall by considering the vertical motion. The fact that he's moving horizontally doesn't affect the time that it takes him to fall 80 meters. The only thing that affects the time for him to fall is the distance that he falls and the acceleration due to gravity. Those are the two things. You can see them right there, the distance and the acceleration due to gravity. Those are the two things that figured into my calculation of the time. Now I'll, I'll erase this and consider the horizontal motion. And again, the key point here is that the horizontal and vertical motion are independent of each other. Horizontally, let's write down what we know. The initial velocity is 25 meters per second. That's the initial velocity, and it's entirely horizontal. The acceleration is zero. Now that's a key fact to understand. 
he does accelerate. When he leaves this cliff, he accelerates down. But that acceleration due to gravity is downward. It is not at all horizontal. Gravity doesn't pull him left or right at all. It, it exerts no force forward or back. So when I'm considering horizontal motion only, the acceleration ends up being zero. The initial position, x0 is zero. And I can find the final position, how far he ends up over here where he lands, with this equation. x equals x0 plus v0t plus one-half at squared. Now this equation simplifies very nicely in this situation. The fact that the acceleration is zero makes this term here become zero. And that's the largest, most complicated term in the equation. The initial position is zero, so this term also ends up being zero. And the equation simplifies to this, x equals v0 times t. And you should recognize this. This is just distance equals velocity times time. Or what they often say in Algebra 1 classes, distance is rate times time. And if you understand that the acceleration being zero is going to cause this equation to simplify to that one, then you can just start right there. You can just write down x equals vt. And that will be fine. You don't have to write all of this down and then simplify it out. But I, I do want to write it now so that you see that that's happening. But if you're just go covering a horizontal distance and there's no horizontal acceleration, then distance is rate times time. Or distance is velocity times time. So we can just put in the numbers and we'll have an answer. Distance x is going to be the velocity, 25 meters per second, times the time. And the time we found from the vertical motion, that was 4.04 seconds. And that's generally the case that the time for the horizontal and the vertical will be the same. We uh, see the seconds cancel out here, leaving us with meters for our unit. And 25 times 4.04 .04 comes out to be 101 meters. So he lands down here and just barely misses the jagged rocks. Although hitting the water at that speed isn't exactly going to be a safe thing to do, but at least he misses the rocks in this particular case.